And I'm so pleased to have in the studio with me, whoa, there, there it is, me, Kennedy. <laughs> no, I know who you are, Mimi. I just, I just wanted to make sure that I had, I had your Twitter account here in front of me. Yes. Uh, the actress, active, activist, board chair, Progressive Democrats of America, pdamerica.org. And um, you can tweet her at Mimi Kennedy LA or at PD America. And uh, Mimi, yeah, Mimi Kennedy back. LA or at PD America. Yep. Yeah. Great to have you with us. Thanks. So, uh, and and in fact, I'll just uh, let everybody know, Donna Smith, who is the executive director of Progressive Democrats of America, is going to be on after you're on. So yep. we're going to, you know, right just now our studio is... chair. There you go. Our studio is <laughs> only set up for one person, one guest at a time. We're changing that the next month or so. But um, so uh, Mimi Kennedy is with us. And Mimi, you have been um, working on a project, open source voting. Tell well, us about this. It's open source software, and the idea has been for a long time because the uh, ownership by Diebold, by ESNS, these are <laughs> military based companies originally, and they're counting our votes, and they're private, and they have trade secrets. So we need to get whatever is computerized in our voting system out of the hands of these private vendors because they create a layer of legal protection from the citizens seeing their votes or seeing anything else in the software code that might be malicious. Open source means that what is in the code can be read by anybody. Of course, I can't read code, but other people can. That's the open source part of it. We will not be counting the votes on the open source software because even though it's open source, we are not going to trust our votes to any kind of digital tabulation. There is going to be a paper ballot. So the open source software uh, running on simple mm -hmm. hardware is simple simply an electronic pencil, basically. It's an it's electronic pencil. And the reason that's important, people can't quite understand until they start realizing that in L.A., it takes four hours to get from one side of the county to another, sometimes to vote. But if you have this uh, expensive pencil, you can pull the ballot for your precinct, even though you're two hours away from your precinct. You can vote securely and create a paper ballot, and that paper ballot will be taken to the central tabulator in Norwalk, which is in L.A. County, and it's the election office, and under supervision and scrutiny like banknotes with video, it will be a secure chain of custody for a paper ballot. All the uh, ballot, you know, the ballot layout is very important. How you uh, send out your absentee ballots is very important. There's been shenanigans in all that stuff, Tom. Can, can we have the tabulating machines also be open they source? They are also going to be scanners. We're going to call it a scanner for these right. paper ballots, and that's going to be all open source software. Right. Uh, plus, there will be manual audits. So this is actually going into place in Los Angeles? Yeah. L.A. has spent some money that the activists saved L.A. County by insisting we not go fully digital, so we stopped it halfway, and we saved $45 million of HAVA money that was never spent on an ESNS tab. Tabulator. Wow. And it was only the activists, and they called us tinfoil hats, and they hated us, but we convinced them, and now they're glad. So they have spent this money and some other foundation money because the foundation has recognized that this is a democracy uh, value. And uh, we have developed this system, and you can see it on YouTube, you know, the prototype, the vote casting prototype. Vote counting is not fully worked out yet, but we have set the principles, and it is a scanned paper ballot that can be human readable because it's going to be hand counted for audits for full redundancy for recounts for whatever citizens want maybe all the time full yeah. redundancy but uh, those are the principles and the scanning is going to happen either by character recognition of names and ballot initiatives in nine languages or there is going to be a qr code involved but if that happens it has to be voter verified and i have concerns about it and i want to make sure that it brings up the exact ballot image ballot images might be involved and we're finding that those uh, according to bev harris are almost almost on manipulable uh but we have found in arizona they won't let you see the ballot images so we think probably those are a true uh, reflection of the vote because when they hold them back it means that it would probably by looking at the ballot images you could tell that they told you the wrong count that they they committed election fraud and they, they didn't count real ballots because the images wouldn't add up right. we, but we, we we know i mean there's a great op-ed in yesterday or today's new york times mm -hmm. about voter fraud 
we know that there's really basically no such thing as voter fraud. In person voter fraud, yeah. it just does not happen. I'll tell you, the only place, I don't even use the term voter fraud because it's a Republican ruse to hide the fact that election fraud is the real term. V voter fraud when it does happen, is an absentee ballots. And there was a Judge Posner who adjudicated something about absentee ballots, and he said absentee voting is to in-person voting the way a take-home test is to a proctored exam. Right. And he's right. So there's something about absentee ballots that I have learned. They're counted so early so the media can get early results and the political parties can do their thing of early expectations met, whatever. Absentee ballots should be the last thing that are counted because but what what about states like you know washington state and oregon that have gone to entirely vote by mail which is essentially everybody's an absentee voter yeah i mean it seems like a good thing love to me. It I, and I, it's see, I know i know and you used it louise and i would sit there and we would fill out our ballots mm -hmm. and you have to sign the I inside know. envelope yeah. and put it in the outside envelope mm -hmm. and then it goes off and gets scanned it's the vote casting part Mm -hmm. is very good because people can do it at their leisure and study. I always separate an election into two parts, vote casting and vote counting. Right. And the thing that you weren't looking at as a vote casting citizen going, this is good, I can study, I, it's the mail, it's a paper ballot, but you don't know the chain of custody and you don't know uh, what happens on the vote counting side. And I'm trying to get citizens to care about the vote counting side so they don't just go, I've done my job, I've cast my vote, now whatever, I'll wait to hear what happened. We need to get involved in knowing how our votes are counted. And once you look at the absentee system, there are a couple of what you would call attack vectors or weakness points that require a great deal of attention. So it becomes less a convenience and a, such a workable thing and let's do it instead of go to the the polls because when you really build in the protections for absentee voting you're still into a pretty labor intensive job for the election office the activists and and whoever is going to protect our elections it's just us fascinating stuff we just have about a minute left okay. your, your you know your experience thoughts whatever stories about what's going on with PDA right now I know Donna Smith is coming on in just a minute but, yeah but what's up with the uh, progressive Democrats of America PDA has a whole new it's starting the Bernie movement out of the colleges is starting young people demand uh, young progressives demanding action that will be an arm of PDA and that will be the kids they'll all know who their Congress people are and they're going to start lobbying within their region which is going to be amazing they're also going to press on issues PDA is still doing the roundtable came yesterday six mothers who have lost children to police and gun violence were there and it was a very powerful way to start our issues roundtable because that's mm. the reason we're talking about issues we have to change this nation we can't be a killer nation a bully nation a get our way nation a pollute everything nation that's over it's the 21st century and it was very profound you could almost feel the spirits of their kids going yeah mom tell them this has to change and thank you activists this is happening I used to feel that with the Iraq war uh, whenever we had uh, meetings, marches, the Iraq war, I think there's dead soldiers marching with us going, you know, yeah, these people, this, let's do this. So we're still struggling. PDA, uh, PDA is not struggling. We as a people, American people are struggling to change our nation. And PDA knows the legislative process. It knows the political process. And I'm proud of us as an arm of civic engagement. And it's in the political party, the Democrats. Oh, yeah, because they need to be changed bad. And they need to be changed from bad to good. Mimi Kennedy, <laughs> Mimi Kennedy, actress, activist, board chair of Progressive Democrats of America. Hang on just a second, Mimi. This is the Tom Hartman program. I can't hear it, but a guy just stepped on us. Okay, uh, Mimi Kennedy, LA, and uh, pdamerica.org, of course. Mimi, thank you. Thanks, Tom. We'll be back.